Hi, my name is Monica. I'm from cookie.com. I'm here to talk about the Shopify store widget. In the basics video, I went over how to set up your store, connecting the widget to Shopify, and I explained what each widget is. So if you need to review any of those topics, check out that video. In this video, I'm going to go over customization options. And so what I've done is I've taken the file that I made in the last video and I rearranged everything so that's less chaotic. And so now I'm going to go ahead and start customizing. So in the main widget option panel, there's a few different checkout methods. There's pop-up and then same page and new tab. I'm going to select the internal pop-up. I like this method because it keeps everything, the entire shopping experience on the same page. And whenever you select one of the pop-ups, it'll give you these different options to style it. And so you can change the maximum width and height, as well as the borders, rounded corners. And I'm going to style the close button a bit. And the shadow intensity refers to the shadow on the checkout window. The intensity is how dark it is. So an intensity of 1 is full intensity, super dark. So I'm going to keep it at 0.5. The other option in the main options is the cart button. So basically you can create your own object, assign a graphic style to it, and then type in the graphic style name here. And then that object will work as your cart button trigger. So basically it gives you the option to do whatever you want for the cart button. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to create one really quickly to show you guys the process. I like to use state buttons because they serve as a nice little container for your objects. You don't have to use it. I'm going to grab the rectangle tool and create a little frame for my icon image that I'm going to add. I'm going to change the position and sizing. And then I'm going to pin this inside the state button. And so what I can do is I can just drop the cart number in here. So now it's a part of my trigger. And then we can completely style it through the text panel. So once you're happy with how your button looks, you can select it, go to graphic styles, and create a new style. And when you rename it, you want to make sure you name it something simple, no spaces or special characters, because once you add those, like it makes it not work properly. So I just copied it and I'm going to paste it in here so that it's exactly the same. And then I'm going to delete the old cart trigger. Next I'm going to talk about the button. So you can style it with the fill and stroke and rounded corners if you wish. You can also use the text panel. I'm just changing the font and font size. And if you want to change the letter spacing, you can do it in the options. You can add your custom text. We can add an icon, change the size of it, as well as the space and position. And we can also change the hover state a little bit, add some color. And the other option for the button is the graphic style name, which is basically the same thing for what we did with the cart trigger. You create your own object that you can use as your button just by assigning a graphic style to it. So I'm not going to go over that since we just did it. Next, I'm going to talk about the title and price. We can edit these through the text panel. Now with the title, if you have a larger typeface or if you have a longer title, you're going to want to change the width and the height as needed so that it doesn't get cut off. We can change the alignment. And in the title, if you want to change the letter spacing, you can do it in the option panel. Now the price gives us a couple more options for what we can do. If you check this box, you can customize the decimal and currency characters separately. So I'm just going to change the font size and the colors. Next, I'm going to talk about the description widget. So the description widget, you know, we can use the text panel, of course. But the cool thing about it is that it takes whatever we put in the Shopify description box 
and it displays it and whenever the windows resize, it resizes everything responsibly. So we can embed images and videos, place it in the description in Shopify, and then it'll be resized perfectly. So let's go ahead and take a look at Shopify. So if we want to add a video, what we can do is go to YouTube or Vimeo and copy the embed code. And then we can just place it inside. And you can use the editing tools over here to adjust your description as you wish. So if you want bold or underlined, or if you want a link, And you can also have as many paragraphs as you want. So let's save. And then let's go to Muse and just preview it to see what it looks like. So here's our paragraphs with our styling that we did. And watch the video. See how it resizes? Everything stays proportional. So for the image widget, it can be customized. When you open the option panel, there's different responsive options. When you have it set to responsive width, you can choose how the image resizes. We also have the image alt tag. So the product for this sample is like books. So cookie books. Now the cool thing about the image widget is that you can upload different images for different variations. So let's go back to Shopify. And then when we scroll down, we have all these different variations that we want to add images to. Like I have these three different book colors, and it would be really slow to add these one by one. So the quick way to do it is to select a variation. So I want to apply this green book image to all my green variations. So you're going to select green, go to bulk actions, update images, select the image, click save and it applies that image to all of your green variations. So it's just a super quick method. It saves you a lot of time. And so now our image widget will be updated whenever we select the different colored variations. Let's talk about the item variations widget. I'm gonna change the fill and stroke, and then I'm gonna change the text. I'm gonna set it to Mary Pro with a white font, 14, centered, and when you open the option panels, you can change the arrow. So I'm going to make it white. And then you can also change the separator line color. And I'm going to put a little space in between these so that they're more distinct. So let's talk about the single variations. You can, of course, change the fill and stroke. That's nothing new at this point. So I have the different colors for my different books. So green book, orange books, and purple books. And when you open the option styling panel, you can see you can adjust the border scale. So on hover, I want it to be 1.3. And then for selected, I'm going to have it to 1.2. So this way the border for hover is slightly bigger than the selected. Now I'm going to apply these numbers to the rest of my single variations. Now the cool thing about the single variations widget is that you don't have to keep it looking like a radio button. Like you can style it completely the way you want. So as an example, I can get rid of the rounded corners and make it a square. I can make it a rectangle. If I want, I can add text to it. So I can just open it and I can put purple and then you can style it through the text panel. So you know, you can really make it your own. There's a lot of customization options. If you don't want the border scale, you can just set it to one so that the border doesn't change at all. We can also do different shapes, like we can make it a diamond, or we can make it a rounded square. Another thing that we can do is we can add an image as a background fill. So let's take a look at these different variations that we made. So here's our background fill. Those are some different things you can do. There's of course other things that you can explore. Next, I'm gonna talk about the cart. For the cart, we can customize it 
using the fill and stroke. And then if we open it, we can change the bottom section background. There's a top and bottom section separator, but if you don't want that line, you can just set it to none. And for everything that's text-based, you can change the size and font weight. So for example, for the price, we can go in there, change the size and the color. Now I'm going to make a couple more changes to the fonts. For the quantity box, you can get rid of that border by setting it to none. And we can adjust these colors. You can adjust the thickness of the signs by changing this value. For the subtotal, you can change the text that appears. So I can put total, change the size, change some colors. And then there's also the notice. So you can put your own custom notice for inside the cart and for when the cart is empty. Let's adjust the size. And then another thing that we can do is change the checkout button. So make it a little bigger. And then change the colors. And we can also change the image, add some rounded corners. And finally, the close button, we can adjust this as well. And finally, if there's anything you don't want to appear, all you have to do is uncheck it and it'll cancel out the editing options. So that's all that I have for you. If you have any questions, you can email us at support at cookie.com or you can check out the articles and help section. As always, thank you for watching.